people displaced hundreds of thousands and caused 10,000 to move out of the country. Dr. Nick Nguanyam, I'm going to begin with you and of course it's a general question to all of you here in uh, the studio. How do you think uh, how do you think this situation in Cameroon is going to end? Let me just say it that um, if, this, if the thing has dragged on for it's going to its fourth year now, it's just because we don't want to solve the problem. You know, the problem has always been there, it's not new. And then it took a different dimension slightly over three years ago. And if someone wanted the problem solved, it would have been solved in two weeks' time. But because we refuse to, you know, look squarely at it and then address the issues, it's been getting out of hand and it's actually out of, gone out of hand. Now, the, it's about facing the truth and people don't want to face that truth. But this is the good news. You know, a few months ago, His Excellency President Paul Bia was in Paris and he made one of the most important statements that he has ever made all his, all his life. That was the most important thing. If you have to remember President Povia for anything, just remember, think, remember him for that statement that he made in Paris, where he liberated Anglophones. This is what he said. I mean, I'm, I can't say it in exactly his words, but this was the whole idea. He said that for the last 56 years or 60 years that we've been trying to live together, Anglophones and Francophones, in this thing called Cameroon. The intention of the 80% of the Francophones was to, was to absorb, assimilate, call it whatever mm. term you want, so that Anglophones would disappear and their, their genetic material would be Francophonized. And they tried and it failed. That was, that was actually, put, he was putting his finger on the issues and, and telling us where the problem is and at the same time giving us the solution. But as soon as he left Paris, might be when he was saying if the people who write his scripts in Yaoundé were not listening. So whatever we did afterwards, we continue with the old mentality of assimilation. When he said that they had failed with their assimilation, by, by the very nature he said that what was agreed at in the major national dialogue was a problem because the major national dialogue happened before this is accession, this, I mean before his, this is statement. Mm -hmm. And everything that the government had been doing up to that mo material moment, the, the focus was assimilation. So from that moment where he spoke, if we actually respected our president and wanted our problem solved, then we should abandon the road of assimilation and ask, if we don't know the right way to follow, we ask how do we unravel all of this and, and go on the right path. And if we have done just that, if we just need to do only that and the problems will be solved. And uh, before you take the microphone away from me, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's something that bothers me. I've never really got to understand. I don't really understand what's happening. If someone in government could tell me why they are so afraid of federation or confederation, I'll be happy. I know Abdul Karim will not like me using those terms, but I still want someone in government to explain to me why they are so afraid of federation or confederation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Nick Nguanyam. And um, mm. uh, let's move over to you, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim. Uh, would you agree with uh, what uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam is saying that? The situation or the problem in Cameroon hasn't been resolved because the government or those who have the upper hand or those that the citizens look up to to solve this problem are not willing to solve it. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, doc, doctor is right to, to a very large extent. I, um, to succeed in anything, you need to do the right thing at the right time in the right manner. But be, before I address it in my own um, um, fashion, uh, it's like you said, it's three years over getting into the fourth year. Okay. And um, uh, with respect to you, you address someone like me, separatist. And we've told you 1,000 times over that we are not separatist. We've debunked that word, we've debunked cessation. I actually argued that while I was set, and I argued and proved my case that if there's any cessation, it's, it would be the Francophones, not myself. They did that in 1972, not, not me. So we are not separatists. And uh, it's, it, let me give you a classical example. It's like 
trying to debate a priest or a pastor on Trinity and I define Trinity the way I want mm -hmm. because I want to argue him. First, I must define it and accept the definition as per the Nicene Creed, as per Christians, and then we debate. So you need to take us for who we've claimed we are, a restorationist. We are restoring the statehood of the British Southern Cameroons. We are not separatists. To separate things, you need to have a given genus. In other words, there's no, you can't have a multiplicity in instantiation unless it's a given genus. Until you have more than two or more than one, you cannot be separating. So that is not what we're doing, just to correct that. Um, so we, we are not that. Uh, you, you, you can address us in, in, in different ways, but we are restorationists of the state of the British Southern Cameroons. Now, we're talking about um, the southern Cameroon problems. Uh, unfortunately, you're calling it the Anglophone crisis. No, no, no. Uh, it's not about Anglophones. It's not a linguistic business here. It's a complete thing. President Bia, with all respect to his presidency, he clearly stated that they tried to recolonize us, assimilate us, like Dr. said, use anyone. They tried. It failed. Why? He gave the reason. Because of an identity problem. Those now I'm quoting, quoting him those are his words. What is an identity of a people? Basically, our language, our territory, and our education. Of course, you can add the legal system. That's what makes a people. They've tried to shatter that. It didn't work. So that, if you put it all in a, sh in a shell, it doesn't constitute an anglophone thing. It's not about the language only. It's about a complete uh, kit for, for, for a complete society. So what have we been through? We, we've, we've spoken about this history for quite some time, um, pre-1961 and 1961. But when the president of La Republique Cameroon says they've tried to do all these things to us, this is what they're reminding us. The killings in 1961 in, 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 in the southern Cameroons, the Ebubu program in 1961, the massacre of Tombell in 1966, the massacre in the regions of southern Cameroons, Kumba, Kumbu, Victoria, and Bamenda. Then we also have the massacre that followed um, the launching of SDF, and of course, the victory they won in 1990 and 1992 respectively the massacre in 2008 the massacre in 2012 and then comes with akum julius in 2016 8th of december that is after they have tortured our lawyers tortured our teachers raped daughters and now we're talking about what you said is, is, is totally incorrect in my opinion I, I don't blame all of you the media organs i don't blame the united nation because you don't have primary source material. No one can claim they have access to the true information on the ground. Mm -hmm. No one can claim that. But there's an inference I can make. I come from the northern zone. I know the villages. These villages are empty. Some people are missing. So this is the inference I can make. While the media says 3,000 are dead, are dead, I can comfortably say more than 12,000. Why? The villages are empty. We don't know where they are. So the pr burden of proof is not on me. It's on the adversary to prove life. And in the absence of life proving, I conclude that they are dead. And that could go more than 15,000. The intelligence displaced, ma'am, is more than 600,000. The yeah, refugees... I'm quoting official sources, yeah, the refugees, The refugee cases, they are refugees scattered all over um, uh, West Africa. Mm -hmm. Scattered all over. We're talking about more than 150,000. And our brothers and sisters were in exile. Children were dead. So, now, we've had a lot of attempts to try and solve the problem not not the government has not tried to solve the problem the government have tried to defeat the people and that wouldn't have solved the problem mm -hmm. but the international community has come up strongly including the recent uh, process of mediation uh, fronted by switzerland with the backing of canada america and today we know many other countries who are pushing the government to do simple things simple things that logic would prescribe you don't need sky, uh, 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 sky rocket science here. Mm -hmm. That this thing, people got angry in the first place because you arrested their leaders. Then you aggravated it by the massacres that followed. And then you went and abducted other leaders from a foreign country. And now we have more than 1,600 Southern Cameroons scattered over the jails everywhere in Cameroon. Now, 
the first thing to do again we have to say it over and over is to release every southern Cameroonians that is how you start appeasing the hearts of people if my brother is in jail and they came out no matter what even if he comes out with a broken leg I'll be happy mm -hmm. that I'm seeing him then you need to demilitarize the street instead the streets are popularized with military we have to speak French in Bamenda and coming to Douala you need to speak French so I'm quoting an army who told me at below Foncha that he was telling me in French I just picked it because someone sat by me who understands French that he will not speak English to me I have to speak French and this is a guy controlling me in my territory in a place they call a bilingual country a guy who claims to be a government official whose duty is to speak both languages since he serves the people it's not my duty if at all it's a bilingual country mm -hmm. so yeah um, I think doctor is right that the, the will to solve the problem is not there but of course on the other hand that's on the one hand on the other hand the resolve of the people of southern Cameroon is there we are very very confident that we are on the side of truth we are not purporting anything we don't represent we belong to the territory that we sojourn in and history and law are on our side so there are two mountains we are standing here and La public is standing on the other side the valley is truth we're going to have to come down there and speak and uh, talking about uh, dr asks if um, why why is it that a confederation or um federalism doesn't go down the throat of some well um i think that that's a good question for government but uh, for us uh, doc our position is that um uh, the, we didn't touch up federalism like republic of cameroon touch up federalism um in 1972 they insulted it just after 1961 by destroying our institutions and in 1972 they changed it so we are not going down that road again and then we are never going to be at that receiving end where we always have to receive from people who joined willingly as equal status we're not going to receive anything where if, if there's something we can give actually but we don't want to give so even with the thing called um special status <laughs> but getting to that mm -hmm. oh we're getting to that yeah, yeah but i'll say that we are not going to be special status even in the state of usa even in america for example i mean so look we want to we won't and if you doubt me go down there perform a ref referendum let the people tell you that they won't even belong to america america okay yeah. thank you so much uh, mr abdul karim and now on to you uh mr larry Esson. i'm going to put to you the words of um, the international crisis group now they say both sides they're looking at the military and i'm not going to say separatists again but then uh sir Ab mr abdul karim puts it the restoration forces both sides they say must have must i beg your pardon explore compromise solutions aimed at a level of regional autonomy that's somewhere between what both of them want we're looking at um, breaking away or reclaiming what they had and um, a special status or decentralization that is being offered by yawunde what do you think about this yeah, first of all, um, when you look at the genesis of um, what today is described as an anglophone problem, mm. it stems from the fact that uh, at a particular time, um, uh, the regime, the, 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 the successive regime of uh, our country have tried as much as possible to extinguish um, the English-speaking uh, minority of Cameroon. I mean, probably to absorb them completely, like doctor was saying. Now, um, we realize that at the end of the day, uh, it spark up a lot of problems. When you see um, a situation where um, uh, the, 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 the constitution, the federal constitution of 1961 abrogated uh, to probably uh, move away from the federal status that used to be and that was that uh, from, uh, that cemented the, 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 the union mm -hmm. uh, to a unitary state which uh, I think was not really consulted uh, constituted and then from a unity state to a single-handed 
decision by one person to you know move it into the formal name of one of the parties i think it tells you a lot of things it tells you that there have been this successive uh, or constant uh, moves by one party to overshadow the other and probably pocket the other now uh, coming to uh, the regional status and what i think a lot of um, I, I, a lot of proposals and attempts have been made by government uh, like I say, supposedly to solve the problem. But you realize that instead of solving the problem, they're really skyrocketing the problem. They are fueling the problem. Because when the problem, when this whole thing started, uh, instead of getting, when the people, pro they, 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 they asked for a federal state system, a return to federation, you arrest those who are federalists and put them behind bars. Now, you gave the opportunity to the radicals to take up and do and take the thing to where, the level where we are today, which is absolutely I think uh, was one of the most uh, the monumental mistakes made by the Cameroon government. Today, if we are talking of uh, coming back to some arrangement that will definitely fit the the country and bring the country back to peace, I think we should uh, we should really be realistic. It shouldn't be an imposition. Let the people say what they want. That, during consultative talks ahead of the the, the, the national, grand national dialogue that was uh, called by government, you realize that I was part of it in Kumba, and the entire Kumba population stood up for a return to federation. I don't know how many states whatsoever that means. But when the reports that went to Yaoundé were very stunning. That people down there said they needed uh, uh, decentralization. I, I was personally, I was one of the committee members and all, all along the committees we made, there was no suggestion as such. So it tells you that there's bad faith in everything we're doing. Now it comes back to even the national dialogue. I happen to have been part of it. I was in Yaoundé. And the, the decentralization committee, which they didn't want to kind of entertain any other thing besides decentralization, was a hit. It was really hot. And really hot because even the Southwest chiefs, uh, especially the FACO chiefs, were staging a workout uh, that it must include the form of the state. They should be discussed. And uh, when they realized that the form of the state was, was, was kind of, I mean, that was going to bring some uh, chaos in the whole house, they decided to frame up something that is today called a special status that comes up now the spectators the one would have expected at the same time that they said special status was going to carry or was going to vehicle some of the ingredients the values of the wet cameroonians especially electing their own officials not imposing officials on them but today we still realize that what they call decentralization and the house of um, the the, uh, the regional house is still placed under an elected official why would governors not Will not be elected within their regions. Why would? Why should we have SDOs again loading it over councils? So at the end of the day, you realize that nobody is ready to solve this problem. The, the leaders who were arrested there, uh, who were arrested in Nigeria, and others mm -hmm. like BBC and the rest of them, they are still in jail. And what do you think? Why, what peace are we talking about? How can we be talking peace when you are still holding as many people villages? The killings are still continuing. I was driving here. I was driving from Kumba to Dwala yesterday, corpses at Mbalangi. Uh, you know, so I think we should we should be very frank with ourselves. Let's uh, look ourselves on the face and tell somebody we we, we we have to go back to the dialogue table and address our problems as they as we really want them to be. Not that one party should uh, select who is supposed to be on the dialogue table for the other. So that I think there we are we are failing. We are not really we are not we are not really facing the the, the, the bull by the we are not taking the bull by the horn. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Larry Esong, and we're going to come to you now, Senior Vice Ashwin Manu. We have a situation where several armed militias are currently in positions of strength in most rural areas. I don't know how many of you here sitting in the studio can boast of going back to their villages uh, without any problem. Like, you just drive to your village without... Um, getting into confrontation with uh, or maybe meeting um, members of these different militia groups. We're looking at this situation and wondering how it is going to end. Even if the crisis is solved today, what's going to happen to uh, those who have already picked up arms and um, are in control of these rural areas in Anglophone Cameroon? Thank you, Gina. 
Uh, you asked the co-panelists some very pertinent questions, which uh, which scratch me. See, um, I think I will want to take a different view to one of the co-panelists who said the government is not doing anything to solve the crisis. Uh, in all fairness, they are doing something. They want to solve the crisis, but uh, the problem is what they are doing to solve the crisis. Because what we see them doing is uh, maintaining the statu quo. They mm -hmm. consider that they have acquired certain rights which must be preserved. And that is why we see them uh, proceed by wanting to suppress. You see, what they are, they are doing is uh, using the military to crush, to crush the, what they consider a rebellion, and which unfortunately is not uh, the right solution. Because the right solution, as we, as we have been uh, clamoring over time, is to look at the root cause of the problem. You have rightly pointed out, today we have armed groups, restoration forces, that are being uh, supported by a very, very dynamic diaspora. <laughs> because if it is just the guys in the bush bushes who have arms, that will not be a big problem because that is what the government is counting on. They're counting on exhausting the armed force, the armed uh, uh, restoration forces. But it cannot happen because they are being supported by a dynamic di diaspora that keeps giving them more and more sophisticated weapons so how are we going to envisage the end game mm -hmm. you have uh the un america uh, civil civil rights groups that are coming up with proposals u.s uh, senators have been talking of going back to federation and um i want to look at the question if we are going back to federation, what is the legal basis of a return to federation in Cameroon? People will tell me uh, Cameroon has once been a federation. Correct. What was the legal basis of that federation? I want to remind everyone that that federation was the unilateral act of President Amadou Ahijo, who decreed the federal constitution into application. If we want to know the real form that Cameroon should take, we have to go back to Resolution 1608 of the United Nations and look at what Article 2 said. It recognized the independence of Southern Cameroons. To be recognized the independence of Southern Cameroons. That means you are talking about two independent states. And to buttress that, Article 5, Article 4 said the trusteeship, the people having freely decided to attain independence by joining their brothers. The trusteeship agreement between the UN and Britain will come to an end in the following manner. The administrative authority, the government of Southern Cameroon and the government of the Republic of Cameroon should come together as a matter of urgency before the 1st of October and decide in what manner the agreed policies of the parties are going to be implemented. That clearly is a union treaty, which has not been done till today. So if we are talking about any legal standpoint, we should be looking at a confederation. Because a union between two independent states can only be a confederation, it cannot be a federation. So if we are proposing a federation, we should be saying that the two independent states are going to be downgraded to ordinary states, and they will now live under the, a federal republic. But if you want to maintain the independence of two states, it can only be a confederation. So I think that that is the way forward. Let us sit together and have this union treaty that was prescribed by the United Nations when they were granting the independence of Southern Cameroon. If you don't want to do that, what else are we going to do? We are going to have a situation wherein uh, as other companies have said, and as you also rightly said, Gina, the restoration forces are very powerful in the field. They are controlling a bulk of the of the of the territory. 
and uh, the american government has told the government you cannot win that war if you cannot win if the government cannot win the war then what do you expect you can only expect a situation where the separatist the the, the restoration forces gaining strength military strength every day will they, will they will come to a point where the international community will be forced to intervene and if that happens there will be a referendum organized by the un for the people to decide which way to go or the un can just say okay we are tired of this thing we grant because the independence came from the un so okay let them have their independence like it was the case in south sudan so uh, the government has to be very careful here because what they are doing like trying to solve the crisis which is metal suppression is not workable and is no cannot work they should come to the table forget that they are that they say they have acquired rights i don't know who, who gave them the rights the those rights were fraudulently acquired because you cannot give you cannot decree a status for your colleague and from there you start reducing him from a state to provinces from province to region now you say you're giving special status what is that okay. what is all that okay. nobody can accept that nonsense with all due respect i don't see anybody accepting it if those who want anyway i had said that we are going to judge the builder at the bottom of the wall they have they have gone through the with their masquerade of status now it is time for them to apply it let us see how they succeed in getting the crisis over by applying a special status that nobody wants to see okay thank you so much uh senior uh, barrister ashwin manuel fellow viewers if you're just joining us it's uh the pan-african debate on african media and just to remind you this program is an interactive one you can join us using any of the numbers on the screen or you join the conversation on our facebook page we have uh, hundreds of you watching already and um, leaving comments on the, the video now join us using the numbers on the screen to tell us what you think about the two topics that we have on board today now i'm going to get back to you uh, dr nick Nguanyam. let's look at what the government has been doing so far or would cameron let's just say what cameron has been doing so far we're looking at the parliament passing uh, the devolution bill and um, even adopting the bill on decentralization these two bills do you think in any way they are going to help solve the crisis in cameroon i took in a deep breath before trying to answer that question because it's a very tricky question and i don't answer it because I want to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. We are seeking truth and um, as long as we don't speak truth, people are dying. So if I sit on this table and I lie, that would cause the death of many more people. And I, and I speak with a very heavy heart because it looks like we don't like truth in Cameroon. And because we don't like truth in Cameroon, some people are paying with their blood, playing with their lives. And what that is really very sad, it hurts me. You know, when you mention our parliament, that, that, that really, you, you know, I, I, I had a sharp pain in my heart because what we call a parliament is not really a parliament. Why do I say so? For three years running, we've had a problem. And um, I remember the, the SDF parliamentarians trying to bring, bring to bring that problem to the attention of the whole house so that you could, as a par, you know, look at it, but, you know, they kept r running away from it. And, you see, it's like they were running around in circles trying to, to hoping it would just go away because they didn't want to face the music. The, at the end of the day, they come and then they sit in this last session and trying to say, look, this is what we have done. We love you so much and so on. Uh, you know, if you if you have someone who doesn't really want to listen to you, and for some odd reason he jumps in the day and start dancing, and then he's stretching a um, a cup of milk for you to drink, you ought to take 
be very careful about that cup of milk. It's not a genuine cup of, cup of milk. And um, so whatever they have been trying to do, I, I would imagine they are trying to do their best. If someone is trying to do their best, you can't blame them for doing their best. That's their best. So you can't blame them for that, but their best is not good enough. Um, they lack integrity and they, they don't like to face the truth. They don't like, they don't love their fellow human beings. I mean, if you were to stay in Cameroon all by yourself, what use would it be if you were just all by yourself? We have to put in place a system which allows everybody to be themselves. It's just as that. It's very simple. I mean, we've pushed Anglophones to the point where some are saying, okay, we want to become restorationists, and now they, will, they have their clauses to define what exactly what they want. But people just want to be themselves, to live together with you, and do things like human beings. And you say, if they are not your slaves, they cannot survive. I mean, you must make them your slaves. Why do you want to make them your slaves? When you are a slave master, how does that make you feel better? There's no point trying to make other people slaves, for heaven's sake. Just let them be. It's so simple. Like like Barrister was explaining, you can, you know, what parliament, what are, yes, parliament has put it down. I don't know whether it's already been promulgated to law or whatever. I don't know what it is, but nothing is written on <laughs> solid rock. Even God had to mo modify his, 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 his laws. You know, he had some laws before, and then Moses came and then brought the Ten Commandments and then after that christ came with a new new with a new doctrine not that he, he abolished the law but he he polished it you know so even god changes some things and you know that african presidents they also change the constitutions that they can do what they want so this is not it's not it's not written on rock and probably yeah, since parliament was sitting they had to come up with something fine that's great they have come up with something but that something is not good enough and will have to be modified. Even if it's going to take 20, 10, 20 years, it's going to be modified. But what I decry now is the fact that people are dying. And let's do what is right and good so that all this killing, killing stops. Loss of life is not good. When I talk sometimes on social media, some people call me names. Well, but that's the way they say it. Let's look for that justice. Let's look for that peace. And let's be let's let's be civilized. It doesn't really when you kill other people, it doesn't help you. So the amber killing the military is no use. The military killing the amber and the civilian is no use. The amber killing civilians is no use. All this all this killing, killing and suffering is no use when we know the right thing to do. And like someone said, maybe we are being manipulated from abroad. White men or I don't know from where are manipulating us to kill ourselves. I don't know about that. But we all know what the truth is. If you have a plate of rice, share it with your brother. What's the point? Why do you want to eat the plate of rice all by yourself? It doesn't help. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nikon. We are going to get to a few of our viewers who are trying to join us in the studio this uh, afternoon. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thanks for joining us. Please, before you go ahead, tell us who you are and where you are joining us from. Uh, this is Fidelis uh, calling from the U.S. I want to sincerely thank the panelists in the studio. I want to thank uh, Dr. Nick. I want to thank uh, Mr. Emmanuel. I want to thank uh, Mr. Tufarin and the other panelists. I, I don't really know the name. Um, I think uh, having been a keen listener in this uh, media, and of course uh, have uh, a, a knowledge about uh, the panelists. I want to congratulate um, uh, uh, Dr. Nick and uh, Barista Emmanuel for they have left the, uh, the, the, the room and they are, they are now at the panel. But we expect them to have the, the A grade uh, by the end of this year because they are at B grade now. Uh, having said so, I want to also thank my brother, uh, Abdul Karim, because uh, he knows what uh, the, the Anglophone or the, the Anglophone as the, 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 the La Republic force of we are going through. Uh, it's what Dr. Nick and uh, Barista Emmanuel are talking about. If those things were proposed, in 2016, 2017, uh, maybe, maybe some people would have had a listening ear. 
but you cannot kill thousands of people and then you turn around to give them what is in the constitution that you fail to implement. That is really, really, really uh, a, 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 a ridiculous idea to think about. I think that uh, Mr. Dia is only trying to postpone this war because I can assure you that even a child who is born today will get up tomorrow, look at the picture of their brothers and sisters that have been killed and they will, and they will continue the fight. Let nobody fool you that this crisis is just going to end like that with some peace. I hear everybody talking about peace. I've never heard somebody talking about justice. But justice is what brings peace. So if people continue to talk about peace, 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 they are just trying to run away from the situation. Let them solve the crisis from the root cause. As far as we are concerned now, there is no way that this crisis can end without the root cause. That is the solution. Any other thing, they are just playing with time. So that is my contribution. I want to thank my brother, Abdul Karim, for being there. And I wish all of you a happy new year in advance. Thank you. Thank you so much and a uh, happy new year to you too, call center. Okay, we have another caller. Let's just receive the callers uh, before we get back to our panelists here in the studio. Good afternoon to you and thanks for joining us. Good afternoon to you. If you can hear me, you are already on air. Please tell us who you are and where you are joining us from. Okay, um, uh, call center, if that caller isn't ready, we are going to get back to the studio. Now, um, while waiting for the caller, call center, is the caller here already? Good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon to you. Yeah, Please tell um, us who you are. I am McHenry and I'm calling from the Pacific Island of Vanuatu. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, uh, I want to call um, Senior Barrister. I want to create uh, Abdul Karim, uh, Dr. Nguanya. Nguanya, who happens to be um, uh, the proprietor of my school, St. Louis. And um, all of you um, for the show today, I want to greet you people. And um, I've been following them for some time. Uh, I have a short contribution to make. Actually, La Republic has reached a position of horror on our people that the only thing that we can accept with them now, if they are wise, is to give us to live like good neighbors. Because even the confederation we are talking about, it will not work anymore. We Ambazonians, we are now Ambazonians. We are no more Southern Cameroonians. We are no more Southwest and Northwest. We are now Ambazonians. And that is our identity. And nobody will take that away from us. Our babies, already my children, can now sing the Ambazonian National Anthem. And every other Ambazonian child is singing the anthem. That is what they will not take from us. And the days, as days are going, the only chance they have left, they will ruin the child. Because if they don't let us go now, there will be a time when... We'll be living like North Korea and South Korea, and it will take us decades or maybe centuries to even start living like good neighbors. The Republic has done a lot, and they keep on doing a lot on our people. And the thing that we will succumb to some sort of confederation or federation, they're wasting their time. Allah gave them a prophecy and told them, talk with these people, because if you don't talk with them now, you ask for this federation, we will not, they will not get it. That time has passed. We will not accept federation. We will not accept a confederation because as the days go by, they kill our people. We are getting to the extent of North Korea and South Korea. And if they don't want us to live like good neighbors, then we are going to live like enemies for life. I, for one, am happy to pass through uh, uh, um, 
Mr. Nguanyas, uh, education, Dr. Nguanyas, uh, education uh, academy that he put over there. And he, he taught us a lot. And some of us have very dangerous plan with what he has taught us. Sorry, it wasn't meant for this way, but we are looking at this. Let the public let us go because the anger that is rising on us every day will we'll, we'll see them and soon we'll be the ones to give them special status if they are not careful. Thank you very much. Center. Do we have panelists in the studio? We take the last call and then we come. Hello to you and thanks for joining us on Pan on the Pan African debate on Afric Media. Please, if you can hear me already on air, go ahead with your contribution. Mr. Frank Sango, good afternoon to you. Tell us where you are joining us from, and then you go ahead with your contribution. Hello? Please go ahead with your contribution, sir. Hello, thanks for joining us. Go ahead with your contribution. Joining us Hello? from uh, Côte d'Ivoire, please tell us who you are and then go ahead with your contribution. Hello. Hello. You're already on air. Please go ahead with your yeah. contribution. Uh, I'm calling uh, from uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Please uh, switch off your your TV or you reduce the volume. Okay, call center. We're wasting a lot of time just to get that caller, but then I'd like us to come back to the studio. We stop now with the calls. We're going to get back to the callers. And uh, let me come now to you, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim. You did talk about the special status you mentioned it and we are looking at what the government cameroon in all has been do doing to solve the anglophone crisis and we are looking at uh, this uh, special status that has been granted already to these regions do you think it's going to help oh yeah um, i think that's a very intelligent question but be before i try and answer let me just i uh, my father there said that there was something done in Meme County and uh, by and large the people opted for federation. Well, that, that would be news I'd like to see and who conducted such, a, such a, an exercise and who was in the room because I, I think um, that would not be correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, not, not after all the things that have happened. And then also, um, just to, to chime in with what uh, uh, Barrister said, confederation. Again, we are not in our right senses after being through the darkest part in the night and not, can now see light because actually in the darkest moment that's where you see the spot of light if you're if you're if you're conscious we cannot after this be asking for any form of state with life public to cameroon one thing we've recognized and that we know is that we are a free people we are supposed to be as independent as any other country that is why it is an argument it's an argument that we put on the table between us and Great Britain, between us and the United Nations, France can come in somehow. But this is not a debate we are going to have at any time with La Republique du Cameroon, who had their independence on 1st of January 1960. We had us and decided to join them instead of Nigeria. We are not going to be in that position of receiving anything from anyone except our bona fide independence that God has given us. This one has to be clear. And now coming to the question of special status, you, I mean, I, I disagree that the government have tried to solve this problem. We go to school to learn to be able to solve problems. So if I'm told to calculate 1 plus 1 equals what? That is 1 plus 1. And I use the other formula, 1 divided by 1, I don't want to get the answer of 1 plus 1. Though I'm using academics, but I know that the answer is going to be wrong. 
So what Life Republic has been doing in every sense has not been in a way to solve the problem. Solving a problem means bringing lasting, acceptable remedy to a crisis, to a problem. It is not bringing what suits you. You know that you're not going to be solving it. In, in from that argument, from I can make the case that they have not tried. What they did is that they cut internet, they rape people, they crawl our daughters and sisters in mud, they jail us, including myself, they beat, they kill. How do you solve with this? They bring cosmetic things, and the bad thing is that. Our brothers and sisters on the fence with this federalism are the ones giving the Republic the impetus to think that there is still a chance to play with the minds of these people. So that special status is a product of impetus. Um, some of them are still talking about federation. Oh, okay. Why don't we tease their boundaries? Are we sick people? We don't need special status. Why don't we seek their boundaries with special status some more? And the, the, the insult with the special status is that not only has Southern Cameroon fed like Republic du Cameroon, quote me anywhere, for 58 years with their resources and intellect, not only is that the case, but the case is that all the institutions, they entered the union in court with La Republic du Cameroon, all their institutions have been shuttered away. For us to travel safe in this country till today, we don't need to have an immatriculation with NW that used to be their Southwest or SW or NW Northwest and SW Southwest. We have to spend extra money to immatriculate LT or CE just to have safe passage. This is what they have done to us. And the arrogance step up to the level where even the legal system, what binds a country, was affected. Our education, what makes us strong, was affected. Don't forget, in between 1995 up to early 2000, Cameroon was considered the most literate country in Africa. Why? Because of Anglo-Saxon education. By and large, Southern Cameroon, that's the epitome of education in Central Africa. It's no, it's, it's, it's no hidden history. All of these have been thrown away to give us special status. Are we Andhra Pradesh in India or Alaska in America? Special status? If this union was right and somebody needs special status, small Southern Cameroon would grant life public special status. By way of our culture, we can grant special status. So it is not it's a no go area. And yeah, again they can come pick me up, go and go and lock up as they as they do with every voice. But this is the truth. It won't work. If it can work, please show me how. Tell me how. The same day you are in the meeting of special status, the very day you're killing people and the people are telling you we don't want it. There is a day, um twenty second of September nineteen. Uh, 2017. If anybody is saying they saw the resolve and the position of Southern Cameroonians, it has not changed. And again, I'm arguing that in contemporary history, can someone show me a single case in any revolution, including apartheid, where all counties in the territory, we have 13 counties, came out on the same day in the same time singing the same thing. It has not happened. Southern Cameroon recorded that first. So this is a result of a people that has been confirmed. This thing called spatial status is an insult. What must occur? Now I'm saying must occur. It would in my life or the life of my child, but it will occur. Is that Southern Cameroon will sit at that head, at that end of the table, a round table. Not a meeting where we have that high table and some people are seated there. When they come, some people, when they enter, everybody stands up, they sit. No, they are going to sit as equal partners and talk about the Southern Cameroon problems versus La Republic with a third party mediation and then a solution will come, period. In my life or another life, that is what is going to solve this problem. Like the caller said, there is no country in the world, all countries who have had special category status or special status, have not had that status after more than 15,000 people are dead, more than 300 villages burnt, more than 600,000 internally, internally displaced, more than 150,000 refugees, more than 2 million exiled, people lost, losing their job, people in jail, nobody goes through that route, even for a confederation, not to talk of a federation, or less a special status. It doesn't work that way. Special status is granted for territories who have geographical and sociopolitical deficiencies, not for a territory which is viable. And by the way, Sir Philipsons in 1959 made a bad report, a false report. Today we know 
that Southern Cameroons could not have independence. The top third option was not on the paper besides joining Nigeria or joining the Republic of Cameroon uh, for the reason called uh, we are not economically viable. That's not true. How do we know that's not true? Because today we have been feeding the other part for 58 years. How can a, a territory that is not economically viable achieve that? Look at what we entered this union with. Almost everything a country needs including our currency, our ad dad, in April 1962, that is when our currency, the British pound sterling, was totally bought with some few fancy FA. And that will now connect us to the next subject, of course, that equal thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim. Now, before we get to you, Mr. Esong, we have another caller on the line. Hello to you and uh, thanks for joining us on the Pan-African debate. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Please go ahead with your contribution. We are already on air. Yes, I'm from the, I'm calling from the United States. I will first say Happy New Year in advance in the, my brothers in the studio. I love you guys, what you are contributing in this program. I, I want to say Happy New Year to all of you and, uh, my my point is very short. I go to Barista Ashu. Barista Ashu, I love you so much. I love all your programs. I've been following you in the Kronos, all your programs. But what I'm begging you today is, you should know that when they, are, when they go to all these programs, when they're talking to the Francophones, when it's an English program, when they talk to them in English, they respond in French to show you that they don't even want the English. But when you go to the program, since you are bilingual, when you go to the program, when you are talking, they talk to you and you go, you, you give them back in French. But it's an issue. I'm begging you, stop giving them that opportunity. These people cannot make us look so low and you still go there and give them this uh, uh, French version. I've been following all the programs that you are there. When you, uh, you sit there with them, when they are talking in English, they respond in French. But when they're talking with you in French, or they're talking with you in French, you respond in English. Please, I don't want to beg you, but I ask you, you are somebody I respected. Please change all your program to be in English. Even they talk to you too in French, if they talk to you in French, answer in English. Thank you, sir. And I would I appreciate our big media for a wonderful work that I've been doing. We have a wonderful people in the studio, my brother from Kumba. I know you very well. These are the people, the core Anglophones that can sit on the table with that in government and change it in the next day. So I respect all of you in the studio. Happy New Year in advance. Thank you, Thank you and same to you, sir. Uh, let's call center if we do not have any other caller. I'm going to proceed uh, to um, Mr. Esong. Now we have... Okay, thank you, call center. There's no caller at the moment. Now, um, Mr. Esong, we are looking at w what has been done so far. Uh, a dialogue, calling for a dialogue, a genuine dialogue. Just after the dialogue, many people have been talking about um, doing something which is really genuine, and it's of course uh, involving those who are coming from those who are in the diaspora of course they have a, a say in the crisis and those who are in the bushes who haven't uh, actually had the, actually had the opportunity to have their voices heard on this dialogue table so, so do you think another dialogue should be um, held or what should be done yeah uh, you know the, the dialogue yes a major national dialogue i would say yes it was but there was more of a monologue than a dialogue. What I saw there, it was like somebody talking to himself. Um, when you when you want to dialogue, dialogue is between two persons. And in a situation, a conflict situation where we find ourselves, it would have been an opportunity for the the two parties to sit and talk face to face and probably put their their their, their cards on the table and uh, seek for a way forward but what we saw was uh, completely the ideological adversary and um, uh, permit me say here that uh, if it was a dialogue 
anything, a dialogue to go by the, the, by the appellation, it would have been uh, people selecting their representatives. The first of all is that it has to do with those, the other part or the other camp, sending its own representative, not you, pointing or oh, appointing those to represent the other party. It's already, it defeats the very spirit of a dialogue. Now, the next thing I want to say is that um, the, the, the dialogue was supposed to, it was not supposed to be coined or probably narrowed down to what government wants. It would have been something, it would have been a practical something where it, every other door is open so that at the end of the day, all resolutions are taken and the brought down proposals are taken and brought down uh, to, as resolutions. But this is not what happened. Government had set its um, uh, you know, had set its program agenda and it's given the, the, the line to follow. Of course, you know, that does not represent a dialogue at all. Now, I would not want to narrow, I don't want to kind of downplay the efforts that government has made, like uh, senior counsel Ashu was saying. Government has, ever since the start of um, um, the, 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 the crisis, government has come up with some measures, measures that have uh, unfortunately not met the expectations of the people. Uh, you know, cosmetic measures, as we will call them. Now, when you the way they started, the first thing I remember uh, government doing was creating um, a NAM, uh, uh, yeah, that's right, a commission for bilingualism and multiculturalism uh, that that I think was not really necessary at the time. And then we moved from there to the creation, which I would salute, the creation of uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the common law bench at the administrative, at the, the, the Supreme Court, and then the opening of a, the common law section at the NAM. I think those things were also going there, but uh, again, how who is supposed to be in this place because uh, and then the recruitment of what they call 1000 bilingual teachers i don't think that was the problem at the end of the day what really triggered what moved because we have like 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 i was saying this whole this whole thing had remote courses and immediate courses we have the remote courses which uh, back the dates back as far as that the union when the union uh, the, 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 the union between the west then west Cameroon and east Cameroon came in uh, this uh, some of the foibles and the setbacks were there very eminent like i enumerated some of them and then we had the immediate the immediate courses that were linked to the teacher the lawyer teacher strike mm -hmm. and uh, the the ub uh, scenario that we also UB students were dragged in the mall, and then uh, around the, 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 the 22nd, uh, 22nd September, and then October, uh, the gunning down of armless uh, civilians who were who were merely dis who demonstrating their their, their their right to protest. They were not carrying guns then. So these are some of the things that radicalized uh, this um, situation. I am not saying that, uh, contrary to maybe what uh, other speakers must have said, I will not say the thing has gone out of uh, it's, it's not cannot still be amended we can still amend this thing if the special status that was coming came with some ingredients of the values that are cherished by the west cameroonians i think it would have been a step forward towards solving the problem if the leaders who were arrested and those who are arrested in connection with this issue were released in their totality without returning some be they returning some in prison and uh, the dodging and yaoundé there far off from where they are i think it would have been an appeasement if uh, the parliament had been discussing these things even before now i think we would have had a way forward but you look at the time when uh, our parliamentarians are coming to their senses or probably they had some kind of awareness because their various abouts are now become very uncomfortable for them they cannot stand up in parliament and say oh uh, we don't want this thing but i think this is what we expected of a parliament that foreign parliaments are debating Cameroon problems and we stay back here and complain and deny the existence of the same problem is uh, I think uh, that was too um, I don't want to use this word but I think it wasn't it was uh, bad faith and being dishonest to ourselves so I think it is still workable if governments can beef up the situation that is uh, the skeletal uh, spe uh, special status that is being proposed to these people now give them the right to vote their own uh, 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 their own representative if a governor is voted what is the problem if you don't if you don't want to like 
still have a very strong hold and, uh, and imposing an assimilation role on them. Why will you not allow the governors to be voted by the, by the, by the very people? So th I think that is what everybody was looking forward to. But bringing a, another uh, setup that is placed under the same people who have been causing problems and who have been accused of being the true cause of this thing is only it doesn't solve the problem it's rather going to is prolonging the the, the, the 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 problem and making it more more complicated mm -hmm. and i think the more complicated the problem becomes the more government is made. and i believe that some people are making fast fast money from this and that's why they don't want to they don't want to solve it because uh, from every indication, Cameroon's the huge Cameroon budget is gradually moving and is being siphoned in this uh, in this uh, in this whole war. I don't want to I don't want to be certain there, but I think that some people may be making money out of this, since I don't, they don't want to see the end of this war. That I think um, is unfortunate. That we are living in a country where we uh, once uh, I mean an air dorado of peace, and today we find ourselves. I'm not able to even go behind your house again it's unfortunate and i think something has to be done and if something has to be done it is now thank you so much uh mr Esso Larry. now let's uh, get to a couple of uh, colors before we get back to the studio and conclude on the first topic call center Okay, they've said we've lost these colors, and now I'm going to come to uh, to you, uh, Senior Barrister Ashu Emmanuel. Before we get to you, and before we get to you, let's get this caller. Hello to you, and thanks for joining us on the program. Hello. Hello. Please tell us who you are and where you are joining us from. Yeah, uh, this is special status. I'm calling from the United States of America. Um, I just want to thank um, Mr. Abdul Karim for standing strong with the people, um, Barrister Ashu, uh, Dr. Ney, Guayam, and the rest of the guys are on uh, the panel. Um, very interesting topic. We just, I just want to let the like, public know that they cannot give us a special status. Instead, we, the Southern Cameroonians, we are supposed to give them a special status. Special status has been something that has been in the Constitution. Why must they have to wait until they have to kill people, they have to rape people, they have to destroy homes, they have to make people internally displaced before they can be like, all right, let's just give these people special status as a way of rewarding them for what we've done for them. No, it's not going to work. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Uh, Ningguayam and the rest of the guys on the panel to keep doing what they are doing. May God bless you all and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Call center, do we have another caller? Okay. Uh, while waiting, we're going to get back to you, Senior Barrister. You have a question here from someone watching online. Says, Senior Barrister Ashwin Manu, explain to us that after the major national dialogue between the 9th and the 15th of December 2019, the United Nations is reporting an estimated 5,475 people. Uh, who have been forced to flee their villages following a series of military operations and uh, community clashes throughout the Northwest region. Yeah, um, unfortunately, my secretary's father was a victim of it. He was shot twice by soldiers. This December? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's uh, this December. The period, during that period you just cited. Mm -hmm. Uh, fortunately, he did not die. He survived, so he can tell the story of who shot him. Because their problem has always been, uh, there's no proof. But this is a man who survived. He was shot around the shoulder and on his leg. And uh, he has been treated as well. Uh, so I think I can confirm that, yes, you are right. Because my secretary told me that when she went to see her father, the school, the school compound had been uh, taken over by the, the school, the health center, and at... Uh, I think the churches have been taken over by the soldiers who were not using them as their the dormitories. Uh, and that they were targeting, following people to their farms and all that in search of amber camps. 
So that information looks like uh, it's credible because I have, I mean, somebody very close to me was uh, was a victim. Um, you see, after the major national dialogue, the government has been trying everything to give the impression that all is well. You see how they even sent Katina uh, Tumi around, and when he came back, he said, "All oh, things are coming back gradually to normal." People should not be fooled, and especially the soldiers should not be fooled. When one soldier falls, you are, it's like you are taking away part of my body. Because those soldiers, don't, they come from all nooks and corners of Cameroon. Every village in this country has a son or daughter in that army. People should not be fooled. When they see a soldier fall, you say, oh, these are La Republic. Sorry. Many, there are many Anglo forces inside there. Yeah, brothers and sisters are inside there. When they die, it is, I mean, it pays the same. They are our brothers, they are our children. Please, the Amber fighters have simply changed tactics. Nothing has, the thing is not abating at all. Instead of going confrontational, now they, are, they, they, they resort to whaling the, the military convoys to have a heavier impact. And you can see from the reports, when they attack, you hear 50 dead. It's, it's terrible. So look, the government should sit up and do something which should bring an end to this thing. We don't gain anything by losing lives every day. Uh, you see, when you say the UN has reported, well, they are here. The UN observers are here. Their offices are in Boya. We see their vehicles. Go to the field. You meet them there. Uh, last month, one of their soldiers, of their sorry, their workers was killed in Kambe. They are in the field. So when they report, they know what they are reporting about. They know the situation. Above all, the United States has a satellite over Cameroon. In the night here, look, just look up above dollar, you see it. They have a satellite that picks up everything. So what are we hiding? We are trying to hide something that everybody is seeing. It's, it's not possible. The situation is correct. It is just a change of tactics. And if the situation were better, why are the DSDOs still going around installing, uh, trying to install the divisional officers with armored cars and bags of sand? Why is nobody going to the BLM? I mean, why, 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 why? You earlier said this at the beginning of this of, the, of this uh, this program. Who of us here can boast of going to his village? Who can go? I haven't been to the to to to, to Mount Faye for the past three years. I cannot. I can't risk my life. I will not follow what the vain rhetoric that is being vented on the airwaves to go and risk my life in Mount Faye. No, sir. They will shoot you and say it's a stray bullet. I won't go there. Because the situation is not conducive for an elite to go freely to the village and sit and drink his, uh, for those who drink it, his palm wine or, or eat his uh, roasted cocoa. You see, so the truth is that the situation is bad on the ground. And if we have to talk about uh, what you did not ask me, the special status. You see, when people just talk special status, nobody wants, no, nobody understands this thing. What is special status? Let just give me one one or two minutes. Let me explain this thing. They start by saying they're giving a special status. From the definition of it, you see that it is all dishonesty. Now they take look at the decentralization code. Every region is given a regional assembly, which they call Conseil Regional. Every region. So look at Constitutional Council. It is Conseil. It's a council. So when they come to regional, the regional level, they say regional council. Now, to fool, to blindfold people, they take the regional councils of northwest and southwest regions and say, no, it is assembly. It is assembly. Which assembly? It is a council. It is a council. And to tell you that it is a council, Article 331, sub 2, tells you that that council has the same powers as the other councils. Mm. That assembly has the same powers as the other council, the other eight councils. What nonsense is that? You see, it shows you the whole thing. It is total tomfoolery. Yeah. Now, what are the powers? The additional powers. They come inside the council as the, the thing that some of us don't read the word. 
They say they are dividing the regional assembly into two. There is the House of Chiefs, and then there is a House of Divisional Representatives. Some total nonsense, I don't know where they carry from. Now, people think that the House of Chiefs is something new inside that code. No, sir. Even the other areas also have provision for their chiefs to sit. So the House of Chiefs that report back is not a, is not any advantage. It's not of every advantage because the chiefs of the other regions also sit in the regional council. So what is new? Now, look at the powers that they are giving the House of Chiefs. They may be consulted on matters of education concerning the Anglophone subsection, uh, subsystem of education. They may be consulted in matters of judiciary. Then they can deliberate on a uh, matters that concern the chiefs. <laughs> Look at that. That is the first part of their special status. Go to the second one now, which is the special independent conciliator. You think it's an angel from heaven. <laughs> what? What powers has he? Is some conciliator who receives complaints concerning the running of the regional services. He is appointed by the President of the Republic. <laughs> It is another man from Yaoundé coming to sit there to control. What nonsense is this? So why is it that it's only the two Anglophone regions that, that need a special independent conciliator and the other eight don't need him? You see? Okay. It is some other. So look, that is the whole thing that they are calling special status. There's nothing else inside. That's all of it. Okay. Thanks. So you can see that it is special pancake for the face. It is not status. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, uh, Senior Barrister. And of course, we're going to um, just trash, trash this uh, last topic before we move on to the next. Uh, before we get to that, um, uh, I would like us to receive this caller who has been insisting online. Uh, call center, I don't know if they are still there. Okay, uh, we do not have that caller anymore. Now, um, fellow of you asked if you're just joining us, it's the Pan-African debate, and we are getting out of uh, the topic on Cameroon, and I'm just going to give all of you, I'll say, just one minute each, because we are already out of time, to talk about what strategies the Cameroon government should put in place to ensure a peaceful resolution of the ongoing conflicts in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon in the year 2020. Now I'm starting with your one minute, Dr. Ningguanya. Yes, um, we, everybody was looking forward to this major national dialogue to be able to come up with solutions to our problems. And uh, the cardinal and a group of other people were making, uh, were seeking government's approval to prepare for that, and they were denied that opportunity. If the cardinal had been allowed with the others to do what they had to do, and then if the doors had been open for those in the diaspora to actually come in and really talk sincerely at the table and freely, we would have had a solution to this. But you know, uh, may he rest in peace. You know that Ekema uh, of blessed memory said that uh, the cardinal should go organize it in his village in Kumbu and it looks like he was speaking on the instructions of someone from Yaoundé mm -hmm. and that was uh, that, that that his words stood the, 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 the you know the test, test of, of time. time so you see um, for a country to be making a mockery of someone like his eminent Christian cardinal to me and thinking that you can succeed is a really it's, it's, it's a huge mistake I mean you know you could be in government you could be whoever well, it's just it's just paperwork. You've been appointed, or nature gave it to you. But if you think that you can make um, you, you you can take uh, his eminent Christian cardinal to me for a ride, it's a lie. Sorry about that. And there's homework to be done, and will be done again. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nick. Call center. I I didn't get that. Do we have a call on the line? Okay. Um, now let's move on to you. Uh, Mr. Abdul Karim, just a minute, tell us what strategies uh, that the Cameroon government should be putting in place to solve this uh, crisis in 2020. Yeah, I think uh, well done is better than well said. Mm -hmm. yeah, 
the right actions have to be done. And uh, I want to thank uh, Senior Barrister for unpacking. I, I didn't even care about reading the crap, but I want to thank Senior Barrister for unpacking uh, the special pancake that was presented as special status. Thank you, sir. So now we can all see the intent and purpose of, of such a thing. So, um, and also, you see, um, patience is the mother of a very good child. Southern Cameroonians have been patients for 58 years and they give birth to a very good child called Resolve. That's what we have. So, very simple. What must be done? I'm begging all my elders, including religious people like Pal Kadena mm -hmm. He's been taken for a right. After a very stand-up moral career that this man has, he's been taken for a right. He should not allow himself anymore. Things are simple and we are, they, are, they are going to do it whether they like it or not. Willingly or forcefully. Release every Southern Cameroonians who are in the jails. I spoke to Sisiku, who is the face of this revolution, after my release. He said he's not interested in coming out except every single other Southern Cameroonian is out. That even in the nearer turn, the leadership, he wants to be the last. Unless they forcefully bring them out, everyone should come out. What ingenuity. Secondly, demilitarize the zones. Remove the military. They are causing more harm. They are making us more angry while killing us and doing all those things. Thirdly, sign an accord. I wouldn't call it amnesty because you don't have the legal standing. If we trace some history, you don't have that legal standing to grant amnesty to people who freely join you. So sign an accord of free entrance to Southern Cameroonians to their territory from abroad. Sign that accord. That when they will come in, you will not disturb them. Thirdly, sit on a third party mediated table for debate and negotiation. It can't be dialogue. Dialogue is a, is a, is a two-way, agreeable conversation, to arrive at a point. This thing has to be a debate. There is a debate over a territory. It cannot be dialogue. So since we claim we have a case, if anyone thinks they have a case against us, we're going to debate it. And of course, it's going to end on a negotiation platform. Win-win situation, whatever. I'm not here to define what the outcome would necessarily be. Everybody knows what I would like the outcome to be. <laughs> but it has to be that genuine stand on a round table, not where we come, somebody will come in for us to stand up and they go and sit and, 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 and push their stomach and tell us what they want for us to gather. No. Okay. We see that as equals. For men to be men, they have to be equal to begin with. Okay. We sit on a round table, discuss this issue, debate them, deliberate on the point, and part ways. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, let's get this last caller before we come to you, Mr. Esson. Please go ahead with your contribution. You're already on air. Yeah, uh, uh, this is uh, coming again. You know, uh, this is a very good uh, topic. And uh, in as much as you guys are debating, it is our uh, responsibility to educate our people so that they should not buy uh, the fake news of uh, special status. Uh, I understand that uh, special status is talking about uh, the judicial system, uh, the educational system, and you can name the rest. So I want to ask anybody who is talking about a special status, I want that person to first of all tell Southern Cameroonians and Bazoonians that you came to this union with the free system of education, so we want to give you back now your uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon system of education. I want, to, I want somebody to tell us that we came with the, 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 the French language, now we want to give you back your English language. I want somebody to tell us that no, you came with the a, a, a French judicial system. Now we want to give you back your Anglo-Saxon judicial system. Look at the question that anybody who is talking about special status, that person should first of all ask himself. Because these are the narratives that people just go out there and and and, and fill it out to, to, to confuse our people. Because you cannot give what you don't have. Now, what 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 uh, uh, Francophone don't know is that we, the Southern Cameroonians, we are very intelligent. We might be small in number, but we are not stupid. Because when you look, we have our strength in debating. A, a, a French person don't know how to debate. Arrogant, that is all they have. Now, when you see 
when you say uh, the way they, 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 they present their issue, you discover that they are, they are doing the same as the colonial man. They don't know how to, to debate, they don't know how to talk, and therefore their arrogance and all that is it, 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 getting uh, uh, the people more radicalized. That is why you see our people have determined that they must fight the last man standing. What is Santo to do? Before Santo uh, went in for the presidential election, he said there is nothing like separation. There is nothing like federation. After after George, he said there is nothing like separation. There is nothing like federation. But just a reason, I have been talking about federation. Let's just get your reactions before we get into the next topic. Call center, we stop now. We are not going to receive any more calls for now. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Esson, tell us what uh, what you think the government should be doing that they have not been doing in 2020 because we cannot look at what they should be doing again in 2019 because the year is already coming to an end. Yeah, you know, uh, the government, uh, besides what uh, the other panelists have put forth here, government should be able to give to the people what they want. If the people are standing for a federal, a federal system of government, give them that. And uh, clothe it with the core values of what they brought into the union. That's what I'm saying. Their educational system, their judicial system, their culture, their way of life. And I think those are, those are things that are non-negotiable in any society that is perpetuating and probably preaching peace. Uh, that the people should have what they want. Secondly, I am also of the opinion that if those who have been, who have been detained for years now, including Mancho BBC, he didn't carry guns. I don't see why Mancho should still be behind bars and far off from his own. Those are people, uh, the Kofun Revolution was one of the revolutions to, in fact, draw the attention of uh, the powers that be, especially the city council then, uh, to see to it that the town received a befitting uh, uh, a, a facelift. And if such a person is arrested and locked up until date, is still kept behind bars. I think it is injustice being perpetuated there, not not peace. We cannot be talking peace and perpetuating injustice at the same time. I am also talking of, I'm looking at a situation where some of those bills, obnoxious bills that are passed in parliament, like the bill, the recent bill on the promotion of bilingualism, uh, promotion of bilingualism, which kind of forces the French language to be used in common law courts, where the, the reverse is not true. And so why, why would such bills be forced to and even when parliamentarians of english expression those who were there including the recipient parliamentarian whom i said have started coming to their senses now refused to endorse that bill that bill was forced or hastily forced into into into, 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 into parliament and it went through so you see the, some of these bills are, are a provocation to the people out there so why not withdraw some of those bills and allow the status quo please allow them allow them to enjoy the land what they brought and how they feel let the courts let the common law courts operate within the ambit of what is of what obtains else i mean in, in uh, elsewhere as common law uh, 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 in common law jurisdictions so when we have to when we have to probably uh, uh, um, kind of uh, how do how will i even call it here kind of uh, infiltrating with the other court other 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 uh, 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 items i think it's it's not helping it's not helping uh, the education okay. educational system is almost is almost being killed and almost francophonized that uh, I think that's not uh, what we so let these things let the people be given what they want and i think we, we move forward from there okay thank you so much uh mr esong larry now uh, and with you uh, senior barrister ashu emmanuel what should the government be doing cameron government what should the cameron government be doing that they haven't done over the years we're moving into the fourth year of a crisis that has claimed so many lives and displaced so many what should they do to solve this crisis this 2020 thank you gina see when i look at the way this government in place is handling this crisis i ask myself i'm tempted to ask myself the question are we cursed because with this parliamentary session that just passed, I think that was their last opportunity to solve the crisis themselves. And I think I said so on one of these uh, of your 
of this of the social medias i said that if this government likes if they love this country they should themselves ask this parliament to restore federation because like one of uh, these civil society organizations said the government and the restoration forces should shift somewhere to the center if you cannot one person is asking for total independence the other one says no we maintain the statute quo shift somewhere to the center and that center seems to be federation should we continue losing lives and wait until the un steps in to install federation after we have lost more than uh, almost a million people that is not i mean it's senseless the economy is on its knees southern Cameroon was declared by this very government as an economically disaster area so look cdc is finished sonara more look at that what are they expecting that the with the uh, law the decentralization code and their national dialogue things are coming back to normalcy that is wishful thinking now i said that was their last opportunity this uh, parliamentary session that just passed so what are we expecting from them now i will tell you plainly i am expecting nothing from this government more especially as they are stubbornly going ahead with those elections which nobody wants to see and which are i mean even the u.s has asked them to stop that thing they don't want to hear they are going ahead stop only so what do you expect bet sanctions impending sanctions from the international community i am sure that they are going to come sanctions will start falling and all of us are going to suffer mm -hmm. and the un is most likely coming going to step in if the killings continue as we are seeing they will step in to stop the humanitarian disaster and you know what that means when they come in we don't master they're going out so i think this government i don't know whether they have they can they have any other option of standing up because that would have been the opportunity for them to put back federation on the table and they would have had a sizable part of the population that would have Seven. sided with them but now they threw it off instead of putting federation they carry special status that does not even convince the primary school okay. child. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Senior Barrister uh, Ashwe Manuel. Fellow viewers, if you are just joining us, it's the Pan African debate on Africa media, and we're moving into the second topic. We're discussing that briefly, and it's about the new currency that is going to be adopted by at least.